Hi everyone. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about augmented reality and hopefully by now you've all completed the reading that I had up and you've had a chance to discuss it a little bit on the boards. Uh, so at this point I wanted to add my own kind of three cents to it. So first, you know, what is augmented reality? Well, augmented reality is a live view of the world that is enhanced by some sort of additional information or content that's from a virtual presence, right? Usually done through a set of special glasses, um, some sort of headset, um, and it could be, by the way, we usually think of it as visual, but it could be audio as well. It could even be tactile in a way, right? Um, and, uh, it, you know, in a lot of cases, it's even done just using a very simple device like a smartphone camera, right? Um, augmented reality is also distinct from virtual reality in that um, virtual reality totally contains the user within a virtual space, whereas augmented reality, really the emphasis is about the intersection of the real world and the virtual world. Uh, so how do you create augmented reality? Well, there's a number of different um, examples of technology out there, right? So Google Glass did this. It had the little ability to project um, a small screen uh, that was in the corner of your eye that you could see and get content about um, what was going on around you, right? Um, and it also had the ability to use the camera in the, uh, the glass to actually process information. So for instance, you could um, see words translated, right, using the Google Glass, right? Microsoft HoloLens, right, which is a, a newer piece of technology, um, is kind of trying this in, a, in an even bigger fashion. Um, Google Glass was really designed to be mobile so you could walk around and use it. HoloLens um, is still mobile, but you, you do have to have other devices nearby, right? Um, and so um, it's not as mobile as maybe the Google Glass was. The interesting thing here is Microsoft HoloLens calls this holographic computing as opposed to augmented reality or virtual reality because it allows you to interact with these holograms as well that are projected into the space, right? Um, another device, of course, is just doing, using the smartphone. And of course, many people had the experience of using Pokemon Go on a smartphone uh, at some point this summer, right? And this allowed you to interact with these GPS located stops around the world uh, and then use your little um, device to kind of capture Pokemon, right? And this is on a smartphone, so it's using nothing but the camera and, um, and projecting kind of the virtual world onto the real world through that. So it's actually a picture I took this summer while in Germany, right? Um, so that's how you use what, what augmented reality is. How can you use it in a marketing context? Well, there are gonna, I'm sure there are gonna be many uh, use cases to come out, but, but I think of two big cases. One is information content enhancement, right? So you have um, a device, whatever it is, whether it be a smartphone or something like that, you're seeing something about the real world and then you're adding content to that, right? And that can really either be um, in the context of a focal brand. So you're, for instance, in a retail environment and you're getting information about what the brand's offerings are or maybe new entertainment, right, um, about the brand. And I, I can imagine this, you know, really clearly if there was a standard augmented reality device, you could imagine that people might walk into a store and automatically every item in the store can light up in terms of providing with additional content about that item, right? Uh, another area that's kind of related to information content ha enhancement is comparison. So this is not a brand focused application, right? This is a, a neutral application such as Yelp or TripAdvisor or something like that, that is providing you with content about different uh, things that you might be walking around and see. So for example, displaying reviews over restaurants as you walk by them, right? So that's kind of information content enhancement. There the focus uh, really is not on a particular product, but rather a group of products or a group of brands and showing the interactions between them. But I can't imagine also a use case is basically, in a lot of the cases that we've seen so far in marketing, have been focused on a specific product interaction. So giving you the ability to virtually interact with that product in a physical space, right? So an augmented reality mirror, for instance, that allowed you to try on different clothes would be a great example of a product interaction AR use case. So let's talk about a couple of examples. So focal brands. So this has been tried. Um, I, I'm having a hard time finding examples of cases where like you walk into a store and almost everything is augmented in some ways, partially because I think that's the, the augmented reality is really um, focused on a small set of objects that you can interact with right now. So the number of things you can interact with right now on most of these devices is small. You can't interact with 20 
uh, physical objects simultaneously. Uh, that of course will change as time goes on, right? Uh, but here's an example. Here's a couple examples I found of two gas stations that are using augmented reality examples in their retail environment. So if you are in a speedway, for instance, you can get these um, these special cups that then allow you to kind of interact with them by playing a game where you have to stack ice cubes within the system, right? And then Hess, another um, gas station, has the ability to scan a poster. And then when you peel the poster back, you have the ability to kind of play basketball, right? Um, on the, on, in the game, right? And both of these are in, so, so neither of these are directly related to um, the, um, well, I mean, they're, they're not directly related to the main product, right? Speedway and Hess are both selling gas, right? Though, but they're related to getting people into those retail environments, getting them spending money on auxiliary items in the Speedway case. Uh, these these cups and these chills in the in the Hess case, it's actually getting them directly interacting with advertising for drinks and things like that, right? So selling these auxiliary items uh, that are part of their retail environments, right? um, and in some cases, these those auxiliary items are more of a revenue maker than their 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 main product. Uh, a comparison example also is something like the Yelp monocle, right? So Yelp, um, almost all the versions of Yelp on most smartphones. You can basically pull up a monocle, and on that monocle, you can actually just scan the environment around you, and Yelp will attempt to put up little uh, reviews of the various things you're seeing near you, right? And so you can find, you can use this to identify restaurants, things like that, right? Uh, so this is a very interesting case of how to use Yelp in order to identify these um, environment, these get these different reviews. So. Product interaction examples, right? Um, so this is kind of a, a kind of straightforward example, and I chose one that I think really works well. This is an example where um, Wayfair is a company where they sell furniture, but they sell it online. And so one of the hard things is how do you convince people that that piece of furniture, you know, say it's a couple hundred dollar chair, will be a good fit for their house when they've never actually seen the chair before, right? Uh, and so they have a Wayfair view, which allows you to actually scan the environment and place the chair right in that environment, right? So in this case, we're seeing someone actually trying to place a, 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 a armchair in the environment. In this case, you can see they actually put the stool right in there and it measures up and everything like that. So you can see exactly how it would compare to the things you already have. So the real question though is augmented reality is a new tech and it's not well adopted. Um, marketers can promote adoption, I think, by enhancing Roger's five characteristics of innovation. This is uh, from his Diffusion of Innovations book, right? Um, and one of them is, you know, relative advantage, right? So relative advantage says that products are more likely to be adopted if their advantage is greater, right, compared to the alternative. So you need to figure out areas where AR has a greater advantage than other forms of visualization or information presentation, right? Um, so the the idea of furniture placement, right, uh, for Wayfair is a great example of this, right? It's really hard for them to have any other way of kind of getting you to visualize that, and the interaction between the physical and the virtual is very important in that space, right? Um, compatibility is another aspect, right? You need to identify aspects where augmented reality serves a need and is compatible with the needs that users have right now, right? So online shopping and being able to try things on seems like a great example of cases where, where that is, right? Complexity, things that are less complex are more likely to be adopted, right? Or perceived to be less complex. Which means that at least in the near future, we really need to provide a lot of guided assistance as much as possible to consumers who are using AR. Right? Um, so have tools to help them line things up. And if they get frustrated and confused by the tool, they're going to move away from the adoption form. Right? Trialability. Users are more likely to adopt things if they're able to try them out. Right? So um, a great example is, is just having it in the retail environment, having you know, a staff member or something like that have a, the tool right there for them to use. Um, a smart mirror that's right there for them to try out. So they don't have to first try and do it at home. They can do it in the retail environment before they ever um, have to think about making a, say, a purchase for an app or um, buying a new set of goggles or something like that. Observability. If you can observe other people adopting it, you are more likely to adopt it. So it's important to make sure that uh, augmented reality is used in publicly available spaces, something like a shopping mall environment where they
they can uh, really you can see other people thinking so you don't think you're the crazy person who's the only person who tried out these smart goggles or these or these apps right uh, so having that observability is really important uh, if you think about it that was one thing Pokemon Go did really well right by forcing people to get out and walk around it became this kind of question people would ask like why are people doing that and then they find out about the game and then they go try it out themselves so uh, all these are ways that you can increase adoption. I think it's an exciting area and we'll see more of it in the near future.